Hello, that's just a man. Um, so <clears throat> here's a here's an, a problem of complicit differentiation. Uh, so I gave myself an equation, uh, and I'm I'm saying if you were to somehow solve for y. Uh, which is would be very hard or impossible, but you could. Um, we know uh, a while ago we learned the intermediate value theorem, which if if I give you x, you could like approximate y as much as you wanted. Um, if you were to solve for y, you would have a function with a formula. Right now, you just have a function that you don't know the formula for. Uh, find the derivative. Basically, I mean, I know to find the tangent line. Um, the, the important thing is finding the slope. So uh, I'm trying to find y prime. So I'm going to do the good old implicit differentiation thing, which is where you take your equation, you take the derivative, you chain rule it very carefully, and then you solve for y prime. So I'm going to take my equation, one half sine of 2x, equals cosine y plus two to the pi minus y. And I'm going to take derivatives on both sides. So the thing is, well, one half sine of two x is definitely a function um, of x. And the right hand side is also a function of x because y is a function of x, and then you're doing some other things to y. Okay, so um, feel free to pause the video uh, and try this along with me. Comment down below something, something where you think this is going. Like, subscribe, buy my merch, uh, something, links below. So uh, on the left, what do we see? Uh, I see I see a constant that I want to pull out of there because uh, multiplying by a constant can come out of a derivative. That's like the first, second rule we learned. And now this clearly looks like, like the chain rule because uh, this function sine of 2x is the result of taking x, multiplying it by 2, and then doing sine to it. So when you say I do a thing and then I do another thing to the answer, that's what the composition is. This is a composition of two, the multiplication by 2 with sine. So um, one way, one way to do it, one pretty lazy way to do it, is to say that this is the derivative of sine of two x with respect to um, with respect to two x. So now I'm thinking of two x as well as as a variable. I I'm thinking of this as a thing that I might decide to call u, and then this is d sine u du. But I'm not even bothering to call it u. And then the chain rule says, write these things as if they were fractions that cancel. Uh, and that lo literally looks like the derivative of 2x respect to x, which is exactly what it is. Uh, and this is, um, so I have one half, I have the derivative of sine. So if I'm treating, feel free to delete that 2x and replace it by a u. If I'm treating 2x as its own thing, the, the derivative of sine of u is cosine of u. So that's the derivative of the outside applied to the inside. And then the derivative of 2x, uh, well, that's uh, that's just 2 by the power rule. The derivative of x to the 1 is 1. And then these two cancel. And I want to make sure to cancel them because I have to. I'm not done with this equation. So that's all there is on the on the left hand side. What is on the right hand side? Uh, well, there's a sum. So I can I can just 
split the derivative into the sum of the functions because derivatives uh, can distribute over sums. And now each of these is a composition. Um, basically, when you see letters, if you're taking a derivative respect to x, which is what this means, this means you're taking the derivative respect to x. If you don't see, if you don't see, if you see things that are not x's there, that means you're going to have to use the chain rule. Um, because the derivative, um, this is definitely not negative sine of y. This is the negative sign of y times whatever the chain rule tells me it is, which is dy dx. <laughs> and this is the same, the same thing. Maybe I'm gonna have to use the chain rule twice here. There's a function, there's a function inside phi minus y to which I'm doing then the exponential with base two. So the derivative is going to be the derivative of the outside with respect to the inside times the derivative of the inside. Well, I started, so these have to look like they cancel. So um, if I started saying take the derivative with respect to x, I can't change it now. So, um, so that's what I have so far. Now, uh, next step. Here I have the derivative of cosine of y with respect to y. I know what that is, that's negative sine of y. Um, you, you might have you might have a temptation to say that it's the sign, but I like I bet you have a device in your home that you can ask right now, what's the derivative of cosine? And it will tell you a negative sign. I don't want to turn on that crap right now, but I bet it would work. Um, and then I have dy dx. dy dx is the derivative of y respect to x is the thing I'm looking for. Uh, I don't know. I don't know what it is. I'm trying to solve for it, so I'm not going to be able to. Like, if you're trying to solve an equation for x, you're not going to be able to plug in something for x. And you don't know what it is. Uh, next up, I have the derivative. So, if I call u equals phi minus y, this is the derivative of two to the u with respect to u, and on um, Thursday, we learned uh, that the chain rule knows the answer to the derivative of any exponential function. The derivative of an exponential function is the, the same function times the logarithm of the base. This is, I never remember if I'm supposed to multiply or divide by the logarithm, but I probably should remember because this is very useful. If you don't remember, you need to write two to the u as e to the u times log two and do what we did on Thursday. If I was a real YouTuber, I would say a link in the description down below, but I'm not gonna link the description down below. Just look for look for it. Um, so um, what's next? So I'm taking the derivative. So u is pi minus i. So the derivative of this exponential function is the same exponential function times the logarithm of two. If I just look at this formula that I just wrote, replacing u by pi minus i. Uh, all right, let's keep going. So now this is multiplied by, by this thing. So that's, so this is the derivative of a sum. I should have written brackets there. If you, always, if you don't know if you should write, write brackets or not, you should write brackets. Um, so this is the derivative of a sum. So what I'm gonna do is split it into the sum of the derivatives because then I'm gonna see dy or, or uh, sum or subtraction, doesn't matter. 
So what I see is uh, the dy dx that I am trying to learn about, and then d by dx. So um, I, I want to to yell at your screen right now what d by dx is, but I can't I can't um, I can't pretend that I'm engaged by you yelling at your screen. So. I'm just going to tell you pi is a constant. So its derivative is uh, 0. The derivative of 3 is 0. The derivative of pi is 0. And an urban legend that people have in Europe is that in Indiana, pi equals 3. <clears throat> so, um, so where we are right now is that we have the cosine of 2x equals sine of y times y prime plus two to the pi minus i times the logarithm of two times the derivative of pi minus the derivative of y. And um, so what I was saying is that this is the derivative of a constant this is the derivative of y. So what I have is that the cosine of 2x equals the sine of y times y prime times log 2 times 0 times negative y prime. If you don't write the brackets there, it's going to look not like multiplication by negative y prime, but like subtraction of y prime. And then everything's going to be ruined. Christmas is going to be ruined. Uh, OK, so I took the derivative. That's step one. Uh, step two is um, uh, solve for y prime. And here, I would put all the y primes in one side and all the things without y prime on the other, but that's already done. Uh, so what I'm going to do is pull out the common factor of y prime, sine of y plus 2 to the pi minus i times the logarithm of 2 times negative 1. So this negative sign is now over here. And this means that y prime equals cosine of 2x minus 2 to the pi minus y log of 2. And that's the answer. So um, the question is now, did I do this correctly? And if I didn't, am I going to re-record the, the video? Or am I going to uh, just go with it? Am I going to pretend I don't know that it's wrong and let someone else figure it out? So this is uh, the derivative of y with respect to x. If I know x and y, I can tell you what y prime is. And in the question that I that I was being asked by the Jamboard uh, was finding the tangent line at the point x and y equals pi pi. So this is not part of the problem, but let's just make sure that the point pi comma pi is in the graph. So the equation, um, that means that it satisfies the equation. The equation one half sine of Oh, 2x equals to cosine y. Uh, to, uh, plus 2 to the pi minus y. So um, so let's do this. Um, I need to um, plug in x equals pi and pi y equals pi in there and see what I get. I get one half sine of two pi 
equals cosine of pi. Well, this is why I'm trying to figure it out if it equals or not. Plus 2 to the pi minus pi. Um, hey, device, what is sine of 2 pi? Sine of 2 pi equals 0. So uh, you should know this, but if you don't, you can Google this until you know this. And if sine of 2 pi is 0, that means that sine of pi is 0. Since sine squared plus cosine squared that up to 1, that means that cosine of pi is going to be either 1 or negative 1. But also, I just know it's negative 1. Draw the circle. So 2 pi is just a full term. So it's 0 degrees. You can see that the sine is 0. And cosine of pi is the x coordinate of this point. It's negative 1. And then I have 2 to the 0. And 2 to the 0 is anything to the 0 is 1. So I have 0 on one side, 0 on the other. So indeed, the point is on the curve. That's nice of the point to be on the curve. So um, I mean, we, the, we did the complicated part already. The Now it's just a matter of plugging in could use a calculator to plug to plug it in, but that wouldn't mean for that wouldn't make for the engaging content that I'm making right now. And I'm I'm really um all about that engaging content. If I make x equals pi and y equals pi, I get cosine of two pi, which is one. I feel like I copied this wrong, didn't I? Yeah, I, I wrote y's instead of pi's. I was too busy thinking about my engaging content. Okay, so the denominator is sine of pi. We make, or at least I make so many mistakes just from copying things wrong. Because when a thing is complicated, I pay attention, but when it's just copying, I start thinking of how to be a better YouTuber. So cosine of pi, draw Mr. Circle here. Uh, it's over here. 2 pi is a full turn. The cosine is the x coordinate. So cosine of 2 pi is 1. Sine of pi, well, pi is a half turn. Uh, sine is the y coordinate, so sine of pi is zero. Then I have two to the zero, um, which is one, and then I have logarithm of two. So the answer is one divided by negative logarithm of two. Sure, um, it's a number. What is one divided by negative logarithm of two? Negative 1.44, sure. So um, the slope of the tangent line is negative uh, 1.44. And the equation of the tangent line is um, with the point slope formula, which the point slope formula goes like this. You get your point and you do y, ugh, y minus that coordinate and x minus the x coordinate. And then you multiply by the slope. Uh, the equation of the line in this case is y minus pi equals to negative 1 over log 2 times x minus pi. OK. So um, moment of truth, let's graph it. 
so um, I chose this function because it looks it looks cool. And apparently, random equations relating sine of x and sine of y yesterday were very interesting to you. So I'm hoping uh, I'm hoping to make this class aesthetically pleasing. Trying to have like a, a vibe for my YouTube career. So the equation I just wrote was um, this. Ooh, oh my God, so happy. So that does look tangent. Um, and that's it. That's it. Let me let me pause the recording and then look for a good outro. Oh, stop